Hi everyone, I'm Andy, and today I have a short video for you about an interesting new feature that's been included in a recent release of AutoGen, AutoBuild. AutoBuild attempts to automatically create and configure a group of agents to perform a specified task. It's a really interesting idea, and by the end of this video, you should be able to incorporate AutoBuild into your own projects. A quick note before we get started, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've been battling a case of COVID, which is unfortunately still ongoing. Because of that, I haven't really been as on top of things as I would like. For those of you who have requested videos, I'm still going to be working on them. And also, since I'm still not 100% recovered, if my voice sounds a little different than normal, that's why. With that said, let's dive in and see what AutoBuild can do. So here we are in Visual Studio Code, and as we've done before, I'm going to hit Command-Shift-P because I'm on a Mac, and I'm going to create a new terminal window. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a conda environment for our project by using the command conda create dash n, give it a name, python equals 3.11.3. Now this is going to ask me if I want to proceed, and I will say yes. The next thing I'm going to do is activate the new Conda environment by saying Conda activate auto gen YT. Now I'm going to ask where exactly on disk is Python installed for this environment? And now that I know the exact location of the installation of Python that we're going to be using, I'm going to reference it directly and I'm going to say dash M pip install pi auto gen. Now that AutoGen is installed, I'm going to come over here to the Explorer window and I'm going to create a new file called oai underscore config underscore list. Just like in previous projects, this is where we're going to store the API keys that we're going to be using for this project. And as with previous videos, I will deactivate these keys before publishing this video. So I will save this file and close it. Now that we have our API keys, the next thing I'll want to do is come back to the Explorer and create another new file for our project, and I'm going to call this autobuild.py. And now before we go any farther, if you look down here in the terminal window, you can see that in the terminal, our new autogen underscore YT conda environment is currently active in the terminal. But if you go and look at the lower right hand corner of the screen, you can see that that conda environment is not currently active within Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to click on the name of the environment here, and this will pop open a list of all of the different conda environments that Visual Studio Code knows about. I don't see our new one, so what I'm going to do is come up here to this refresh button and click on that, and then our environment should appear in the list, which it does. So I'm going to select that, and as you can see in the lower right hand corner of the screen, now our new Conda environment is active in Visual Studio Code as well. As we've done in previous projects, I have some code ready to go. So I will copy that in and let's take a look at it. I will save this. If I scroll up to the top, everything that you see here should look pretty familiar to you already, except for line number two. Now I'm importing a new object called Agent Builder from AutoGen Agent Chat contrib agent builder. Now, as you can see here, I'm keeping track of my configuration path. There is our OAI config list file, and I'm making a configuration list out of it. I'm filtering over GPT-4 Turbo. I'm setting up a default LLM config. So one of the new things for auto build is this agent builder object that we imported above. Now, what we're doing here is we're making a new instance of the auto builder object, and we're giving it our reference to our configuration path. We're giving it a builder model, which is GPT-4 Turbo. We're also giving it an agent model separately, which is also GPT-4 Turbo. As you might already be thinking, we can give different models to the builder and to the agents. So for example, if we want our builder to be very, very smart and to be able to intelligently decide what kinds of agents it needs to accomplish its job, we can give it a very top of the line model such as GPT-4 Turbo. On the other hand, if we know that our agents don't necessarily need to be that intelligent, 
we can give them something like, for example, GPT 3.5. That would have the added advantages of making our agents a little bit faster and also less costly in terms of API calls. Next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a building task. This is basically going to be a prompt for the agent builder. This is where you're going to tell it what you want it to create. So here we're saying find open source weather data and use it to make predictions. For example, find a recent forecast on open Medio and predict the next day's forecast. So this is a prompt to let the agent builder know what kinds of tasks it's going to come up against so it knows what sorts of agents to create to help you accomplish that task. So the next thing that we're going to do is say builder.build. We're going to give it that building task prompt. We're going to give it a reference to our default LLM config. And we're also gonna say coding equals true. And the reason that we're going to do that is because just given the nature of this task that we have asked it to do, we know that it's probably going to need to create some code on the fly and execute it. And setting coding equals true is going to let the agent builder know that it needs to create a user proxy agent whose purpose is to execute any code that the other agents write. As you can see, the agent builder dot build returns both an agent list and a list of agent configs. Next, we're going to set up an execution task. Once we reach this point, the agent builder has received its building task and it's used that to understand what sorts of agents it needs to create to do that job. And it's created those agents for us. So now that they've been created, we need to tell them what to do. And that's the purpose of this execution task prompt. Find a recent forecast on open Medio and predict the next day's forecast. As we've done in previous projects, we're going to set up a group chat object we're going to give it our agent list, and we're going to tell it that it has a max round of 12, just so that we can keep the conversation short. The next thing we're going to do is set up a group chat manager, and we're going to give our group chat to the group chat manager, and we're also going to give it a reference to our LLM config. So as we've hinted on in a previous video, for the LLM config for the group chat manager, we're going to be passing in the most capable model that we have access to. In our case, that's going to be GPT-4 Turbo. In your case, that may be different. But the reason that we want to pass in the most capable model is that we want the group chat manager to be able to manage the interactions between the different agents as intelligently as possible. So if you have access to a number of different models, perhaps some that are more cost effective, but less capable, you would want to use the most capable model that you have for the group chat manager itself, if nothing else. After we've set up our group chat manager, we're going to go to our agent list and we're going to take the first agent from that list and we're going to use it to initiate the chat. We're going to give it a reference to our chat manager, and we're also going to give it our execution task that we've defined above. So what's going to happen at this point is that the first agent in the list is going to tell all the other agents to do this task. And so you remember above we said coding equals true, which means that the agent builder is going to create a user proxy. The agent builder is going to put that user proxy as the first agent in the list. So when we hit this line, the user proxy is going to tell the rest of the group to do this task. So now that we have all of that set up, I'm going to come down here to the terminal and I'm going to clear the terminal. I'm going to make the terminal window a little bit larger. And we're going to go ahead and run this project and see what happens. Now, this is going to take a few minutes to run. So I'm going to cut to the end when everything is finished. And we're going to go back and take a quick look at what actually happened. All right, it looks like we're done. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top. So let's go over the first block of output here. Generating agents, data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer are generated. Preparing configuration for each one. Creating agent data scientist with backbone GPT-4 turbo. And adding user console proxy. So where did these come from? Data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer. If we scroll down just a little bit in our code, we see our building task, find open source weather data and use it to make predictions. And we gave that building task to the agent builder. We also gave it our default LLM config, which as we can see is using GPT-4 Turbo. 
So we're giving a very capable model to our agent builder and we're telling it to find open source weather data. Well, these agents that you see here, the data scientist, engineer, and machine learning engineer, these are the agents that it thought it needed to create in order to accomplish that goal. There's no further configuration that we did other than giving it an LLM config and a task to build agents for. So right away, it's pretty interesting to see what it thought it needed to create. Now, if we scroll down to the end of our project here, the first agent in the list initiates the chat with our task, find a recent forecast on open media and predict the next day's forecast. So you can see straight away, the user console and Python code interpreter goes ahead and relays our task. The next agent to respond is the data engineer, which goes over the task and what it thinks we will need to do to accomplish that goal. It goes ahead and writes some Python and it hands that code back to the user console and Python code interpreter, which tries to execute it. And it outputs details of the most recent forecasts for whatever location it chose. And then the machine learning engineer looks at that and chimes in with its own information. And the data scientist and the machine learning engineer go back and forth a couple of times. And they eventually come up with a script. And as we can see here, this is where the chat ends. So although this group of agents successfully came up with some Python code that probably will accomplish the task, they didn't actually get to the point of running it. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but before we do, there are a couple of other things that I would like to show you. So back up here in our project, I'm going to add an extra line to the end. And this line is builder.save. So what we're doing here is we're instructing our agent builder to actually save all of the agent configurations that it has come up with for this task. That way, at a later point in time, either later on in this project, or potentially even in a completely different project, we can reload these configurations and use them right away. So let's see an example of what that looks like. So I'm going to save this file and I'm going to delete all of the automatically generated folders that were created when our project ran the last time. Yes, please delete these. I will clear the console and I will run the project one more time. And just like last time, this is gonna take a few minutes. So I'm going to skip ahead to when everything is finished. Okay, so we are done. And it looks like just like last time, the agents were successfully able to come up with some Python code, but it never actually got ran. Now, as I said before, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, but let me draw your attention to this last line. Building config saved to save config underscore and then an ID. And you can see that new file up here in the Explorer. So I'm gonna resize the console so that we can get a better look at this and let's click on this and see what's inside. So here we see the configuration that was saved. So we have our building task, which again, this is the task that we want the agent builder to create agents to solve. We have all of the agent configurations that it came up with. We have taken note of the fact that this is a coding task. We've included the default LLM, and we've also included the default code execution config that the agent builder creates internally when it sets all of these things up. And also, just as a reminder, I will be revoking this API key before I publish this video. Before we move on, you might be asking yourself, is there a way that I can do this with OpenAI assistance? And the answer is yes. This is actually something that they thought of. So here on the builder.build command, this can accept an extra parameter. The parameter is called use OAI assistant. Now this defaults to false, but if you set this to true, all of the agents that the builder creates are actually going to be GPT assistant agents. So just as a word of warning, if you set this to true, this is going to create additional agents in your account. Before we close, I would like to highlight some of the things that I've noticed while playing with auto build this week. One of the things that I've noticed is that the agents that are created for a specific task, while they aren't exactly predictable, they tend to be fairly consistent. These are the same agents that were created the last time we ran this project, and I've run it a couple of other times off camera, and I ended up with exactly the same three, 
data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer. There have been a few times where I've ended up with different things, but overall it's fairly consistent. I usually end up with these three. The second thing that I would like to highlight is if we notice this run of the project created some code, but it never actually got to the point of running it. And I've noticed after running this for a number of times this week, it doesn't always go all the way to solving the task that you give it. It's usually fairly good, but just the two runs that we've done during this video, they haven't actually produced the result that we wanted to see. And I think that there are a number of reasons for this. If you look at this execution that we see on the screen right now, the only interaction from the user console and Python interpreter is just to kick off the chat. It never actually attempts to run any of the code that was generated, and the conversation dies just after the second agent, the machine learning engineer, chimes in. And part of that comes down to the group chat manager and the way that it decided to handle the conversation in between the different agents. Another potential part of that that I would like to highlight is just from what I have seen briefly looking through the agent builder source code, this LLM config that we're creating never actually gets handed off to the user proxy agent. That means that essentially the only thing this will ever do is execute code or respond with its default auto response, which is blank. This is never going to respond to anything intelligently because it doesn't have an LLM config, which means that it's not really a full-fledged agent. In future versions of AutoBuild, I personally would like to see the option to give an LLM config to the user proxy agent so that it can respond more intelligently if it needs to. One other thing that I've noticed is that I've set the cache seed for our LLM config to none. Now, this means that none of our agent responses should actually be cached anywhere on disk. However, if you look in the Explorer, I nonetheless have a cache folder with a cache DB. So it seems that this cache seed is not actually getting passed in to any of the agents or any of the group chat objects. In the future, I personally would like to see the given cache seed be honored by the agent builder and the agents that it creates. So there you have it. That is a very brief overview of the new auto build functionality. As you can probably tell, there's a lot that you can do with this. And as usual, prompting is going to be key to getting this to working properly in your project. As usual, I'll drop a link to a gist of this exact project code in the description below. I'll also post a link to the auto build blog post, as well as a link to the notebook that this code was based on. So have fun with this. Let me know if you come up with anything cool, and I will talk to you next time.